Hey, welcome back to the Shire. Hobbit Racing here. A lot of talk recently, or a lot of conversation recently I've been having with folks about doing project cars, painting, redoing cars that maybe didn't come out the right way that they could have, chassis changes, lots of tuning, stuff that I really, really can wrap my head around. So uh, we're featuring the... Uh, we're featuring the 917K Hobbit Racing. Yep. Yeah, it looks like a looks like a junkyard 917 came back to life. But don't be fooled by uh or be fooled if you want to <laughs> by the appearance here. Uh, it was definitely I airbrushed this car three different custom colors and uh definitely looks like a uh a Saturday night special brought out to the track. But uh I will tell you, this car is uh all performance, regardless of uh, how that paint job might come across <laughs> in any event. Um, so we're going to take a look at another project that was headed my way. Um, Josh Michael, uh, who I race with, uh, must have been working on a project. I don't know the complete history of it, but uh, you'll get the idea here in just a second. So let's take a look at what, uh, what I've got uh, that I'm about to, it's about to be underway here. Project, not this guy. Thanks, Mr. Michael. I'm happy to take over. Man. If it needs introduction, shall we go over Daytona's? Wheel of Fortune. I was fortunate enough to get all four colors in the wheel. stuff that Larry had on there, or Josh and Scott and Larry, or whoever's that one was, run over at Larry's place. Find something to put inside of there. Well, find something to put inside of all of them. All right, well, there's a nice as a playing card. That's right, looks like the ace of spades. Yeah, that's right, baby. Good choice. And there's the uh, king of diamonds. Why not, right there. Mm. That's cool. I don't know. Someone tell me. These cars were before my time, even though I appreciate them. Was that the most recognizable one? The 59, right? Mm. Got to get some parts. I think I'm missing a few lights. I don't know, just one. Okay, that's good news. Just one. Got all inlines, 18, couple, some 18Ks in there. I'm sure I'll find some more 18Ks. Just turn them into like a, a racer for everybody to race. Just grab a car and throw out there on the track and make them all try and make them all pretty competitive the same. Yeah. I'm sure we'll find something in the stash there to <laughs> put on the back wheels. See me design blanks and just get inserts, you know, just go make them. If I can find anything close to where, what it is, or if somebody already knows where I can find them, if who has them, hey, save me the trouble. Tell me who's got the inserts to these Shelby Cobra Daytonas. Yeah. Well, now we've seen a little bit of the uh, condition that everything's in, knowing that there's no axles or wheels or motors but uh, you know we do have a few motors in that bag and the motor pods were in there so um, let's break down one hey why not let's uh, let's break down the one that uh, I think is probably most familiar to everybody I think this is a good one to to take a look at so we'll break down the number 59 the Le Mans car uh, and uh, yeah let's uh, let's take a peek at this guy all right, well, I'm trying something a little different here, a little different platform, maybe easier to see. I don't know, it might be busier, I'm not sure. But here we are, again with the Scuderia Filippinetti, Filippinetti uh, 1965 Le Mans livery. Um, it should go noted that um, the 56, also a uh, 65, uh, but this was uh, Nürburgring. And 
I don't know the history of this car as to whether or not this was a winning car. This car did not make it. I believe this had a blown motor. Hey, right now we got no motor, so they're sitting in the same positions, <laughs> or at least the same position for this one. So let's uh, let's set this one aside, and let's um, let's take a look at what we have, with the assumption, as I dive in, that this is the um, Rebel Monogram series cars, uh, at least the body at this point. As I will flash that up here for a moment. All right, so we do have some uh, possibly electric screws. Maybe perhaps these are Rebel monogram screws that came with it. I'm not sure. I'm about to find out for the first time, just like all of you are about to see for the first time. So I had a feeling that was going to be one part of it that was going to change. So there you go. There's the first thing that happened. So the underside of the rear is a two-piece. We can solve that easily, whether it needs to be or not, but we can make that one piece with a little bit of CA glue. That's rather easy. So what else do we have going on here? So we obviously have a playing card interior, so let's just get that out of here for now and see what we have going on. In fact, our man behind the wheel is actually glued in there very loosely to the steering wheel, just hanging on by a thread and a uh, black, black paint on the King of Diamonds here. So we're in decent shape on the body. We're probably gonna be we're probably gonna be just fine on the body. A little bit of tape there. I'll buff it. I'll do some things, see if I can't get all that. Some of those are scratches, some of those are scuffs. So we'll see what I can do about that. Otherwise, I think we're in great shape. We're in great shape right there as a body. I'll give that a little bit little bit of TLC and figure out easy for me to do there Tony <laughs> we'll figure out how we can uh, how we can do that a little bit better um, I guess it was like that and that was meant for the wheel wells obviously so we'll see what we can do about that and I think that's a fine fine state that that's in for now so then we have this 3d chassis right it is it is an old 3d chassis this is nothing like what uh, the newer, you know, I don't even know PLA, you know, whatever people are injection, you know, are, are putting into their 3D printers. I can tell you right now, this is not it. Uh, this is very old. Um, at least we do have an opportunity for a slotting plus guide or whatever guide of your choice. The actual uh, file produced a nice place for it. Uh, we also have set screw front axle capabilities in here. So there were some nice things that were spit out of the 3D print originally. Now the question then remains, because this is a 3D print, I could stick it in the freezer and I could try and remove these. Again, uh, this was a situation where, um, just a 30 second history here, um, Larry Cox had a track that was based on stainless braid, I believe, and he also had magnetic fleck in the paint. So as Josh likes to say, he was chasing that magnetic dream. Um, no magnets at Hobbit Racing Park, all analog and no magnet as well. So um, no help from any of this. And in fact, um, it could be a hindrance, but depending on the weight. However, I, I don't have an opportunity short of seeking alternate chassis to you know, break this away and possibly break that. So we'll see, there's plenty of opportunities, plenty of tools that I have at my disposal to deal with. Inline configuration here, we do have all of the inline pods that go with it. Uh, some might be offset by a half millimeter, some might be just uh, regular. I don't believe these are 3D printed ones. They shouldn't be by any stretch of the imagination based on what I'm holding in my hand. There's an 18K motor. Yeah, this is not, this is just a, assuming it's a slotted one. So we have the opportunity. We have the opportunity right there. At least it appears we have the opportunity, but we're having a little bit of 
difficulty there. It doesn't look like these really were taken very far, or if they were, there was differences in terms of how they were configured underneath because you have that small flap that is associated with an inline pod right here on a slotted. And so that's not going to fit. That's not going to fit in the current configuration. I can't, I can't get that to fit inside of there. But again, nothing that can't be overcome. These are going to be a little, you know, IROC series or whatever, what have you, that uh, folks can show up and we can run them four at a time. So I'm excited. This one, in fact, looks like uh, this one, in fact, looks like it already had some work done on it. Maybe this is our matching motor pod for this one that can be dropped right in there. Yep, there we go. There's one that already had some work done on it that can be dropped right in there. So um, in all these in lines, unless I'm missing them, we've already got the spherical self-aligning bushings. Put some screws in there. Shouldn't be too big of an issue to come up with that. And then we will have some axle blanks to put on here. CB design blank wheels, and we'll be putting in wheel inserts on all four wheels. We'll be doing a nice workup here on this one for sure. We're going to be looking for some rather thin uh, wheels in the front in terms of their overall width. Uh, this car is very much, um, very much a narrow, narrow car. So. Uh, yeah, that's where we're going to go with it. We're going to go with it like that. Uh, it shouldn't be overly complicated, not a lot of room for weight, where, again, these pieces right here might provide a decent bit of weight on the track, so you never know how they're going to come out. But I want to make all the cars fairly equal, so if one chassis has a bunch of magnets stuck to the bottom of it and another one doesn't, then, you know, there might be some differences in terms of how the car handles. There are magnets actually stuck to the bottom of all of them, so maybe if I find out that they all weigh relatively the same, Maybe I'll just clean up the look of that and then leave them alone. So this is going to be a nice project. I can't wait till it's done. I love the ability to give everybody an equally uh, tuned car and just let everybody go out there and have fun, right? This isn't about, hey, I, you know, bought this one myself or I made this, you know, the best I could possibly make it. This is just a, a nice, hey, let's throw some cars out there on the track that are equally matched and just... Uh, you know, not that, not that most classes that, you know, we run or that anybody runs shouldn't in theory be equally matched, but there's, there's, you know, the capabilities to tune to your liking. But in this case, this is let's make them all the same. Let's have some fun running a really cool car. These Shelby Cobra Daytonas, you know, they have some history. Uh, this one, you know, here and this one here as well. Uh, the other two, they may be repaints. Um, I can't quite seem to find any history on them. Uh, maybe it's not a repaint. I'm not quite sure whether or not anyone recognizes that one. Uh, let me know. I can't quite tell. And then the last one uh, would be an actual 98. Uh, not so much of a livery, but uh, also could be definitely, uh, you know, deckled up or decaled up, depending on what your wording is, how you say it. Could be uh, decaled up uh, as a, just a repaint as well. But overall, I'm really excited about the opportunity to put something together for everybody to come over. Maybe these will be the official Hobbit Racing training cars when people come by to learn the track and say hello and get to know me and get to know the track. Maybe these Shelby Cobra Daytonas will be the opportunity that everybody can come by and get a test run at Hobbit Racing Park. So I'll keep you updated on this. We'll start to get some slow probably some slotted axle and we'll go for some cb design wheels and then i'll figure out where i can get the shelby cobra daytona wheel inserts i'm going to probably try slot car corner first and other parts around maybe this is something that'll be a little bit harder to find i don't know but i'm going to try and stick to the plan and my dog agrees with that plan so we'll consider this part one part one for this guy right here and uh and, and all things for all four of them i'll probably go through doing one of them and then very similar setup for all four of them but i'll probably take us through the number 59 so stay with us thanks for watching and if you like this kind of content like it comment subscribe share it it really helps out the channel
If you don't subscribe to Hubba Racing, I'll poke you with my staff. Pokey, pokey, pokey. She will poke you with her staff.